then you equipped a laser, gatling gun and a tactical dildo dispenser for maximum penetration. And to this day enjoy the menu lockout while the fucking gun is packing in. This is a bug you know and devs admitted it as much. Yet in six years no one gave a fuck to fix it. Oh, and then you can replace the utility slot with some lube dispenser to stop chafing. Support creators on Patreon, dammit! Like, for example, Yamex! After doing that outfitting explainer, I figured, well, some of you actually need some advice to see how to actually make Chad McChunga's scrotum face of a ship. Or at least how it would look. Let's then get building a ship that would be able to do combat, exploration and trading. I mean, three ships. Starting with the combat, my favorite. Now, combat ships rely on three major and one extra minor principles that you need to at least give a rat shit sized fuck about. The weapons with whom to anally devastate, the shields with whom to protect thy anus, the maneuverability with whom to actually perform either one, and extra glue with whom to prevent the butt-related incursions, when the strap-on saucepan of shields drop. I mean, how health. So, about the weapons. If you're doing anything that is related to killing NPCs, the so-called PvE gameplay, your choice is simple. All the weapons should be lasers, and only lasers. If you don't use lasers, I'll personally come up to you and slap you if you don't use lasers! See, not a single weapon out there is good enough to warrant you swapping to one of the try-hard weapons, which after some good massaging will shoot its load and be done for the day, while Lazors will keep on going. On top, gimbaled versions are plenty good enough. If I see any of you plebs putting a turreted weapon on anything smaller than your mama, I mean, large ships, expect a tactical toaster deployment aimed at your face. Learn to fight and move, it's really not that much to ask, now, is it? Oh, and make sure that you don't pull the stupids. I mean, all beam laser builds. See, not a single ship out there is capable of sustaining a full beam laser build, so don't even try. Try out a mix of pulse burst and beam lasers to find a good sweet spot. Now, for example, back in the day, I spent quite a bit of time tweaking my vulture, and I understood two things. The ship is the closest thing to a one-pump chump if you try too hard. And the second, two pulse lasers gave you a very usable loadout, but if you know the ship quite well, you might actually be able to do a bit better, push it a bit further, with a little bit more damage, by swapping out one of the pulses to a burst. It will heat up like a bitch in a mating season, but with control, it's better. As for PvP, well now here you get into some reads, as engineering plays a massive part here. Generally though, here you will learn one critical skill about ships and their loadouts. Symmetry is for idiots! Take for example Furtherlands, the most boring combat ship in the game. Oh, and anyone who says otherwise smells their own farts. Anyhow, this ship has two hardpoints on each side. A smart move would be to, say, equip two railguns on one side, so that they are as close together as possible, rather than being on either side. Yes, you'll have to account for aiming from one of the sides, but deal with it! Weapon coverage and placement is crazy important for pinpoint accuracy weapons like railguns. But what about the good weapons for PvP? Well, since most of you unimaginative pricks will be flying the fucking Furtherlands, here's a few examples for the most popular builds, and you can apply the same principle to rest of your ships. There's the good old two railguns, three plasma accelerator build, with phasing sequence being thrown in somewhere, being useful as always. Then there's the four railgun, one plasma accelerator build. Now, in all plasma accelerator builds, make sure that at least one of the weapons has the target lock breaker effect. Now, that thing is an immensely powerful, some would say even overpowered effect. Well, for the railguns, you should have long range, mostly super penetrator, but don't forget to have at least one with a feedback cascade effect to mitigate some shield cell wankas. After that, you have the full multi cannon build on every single slot. This affords you to use shield strength at maximum all the time, as the power draw for the weapons is very small. However, the damage as well as the projectile speed is also an issue. 
So sometimes people swap out that huge hard point for a beam laser with either the thermal vent or oversized effect, an efficient upgrade. But who most of all can't forget the well, previous example of three plasma accelerators and then just swapping out the railguns with missile racks or packhounds. Boy, aren't missiles just fun? Yay! Uh -uh. Generally speaking, in PvP, no matter what ship you pick, you will see plasma accelerators on ships that move quickly, beam lasers as the big continuous weapon since it also has gimbal, multi cannons for the variety and versatility, railguns for the module sniping on mostly fast ships though, and missiles on everyone. As the weapon in particular is so overpowered that it's not funny. Oh, and point defense is useless. For most people, they don't stress over the resistances of each weapon type since engineering simply fucks that concept anyhow, so the more damage you get out, the better in any ways. Most of the time, plasma accelerators being a great damage dealer, just generally, is a great choice. But remember that these are just a few examples and everyone has their own approach and playstyle, so I'm sure there will be some interesting suggestions in the comments too, so try them out. Well, as much as you could before committing to engineering anything. After weapons, we got shields. Well, shields are optional. Well, they are as optional as any article of clothing in Siberia. But hey, if you like your little pecker being hard and bluer than your balls, well, go ahead and say that clothes are optional. No, the main reason why shields are so important is twofold. Number one, it prevents any module damage while it's on, so any railgun shot or more importantly missile barrage will not affect you as much. And it's regenerative HP. Uh, oh, and it can be engineered to such insane levels that a Vatican child abuse stories might as well be a daily occurrence in comparison to how much abuse the shields get. Fact is, you have to have them and unless your weird old utility slots also must be filled with shield boosters that are maxed out for capacity. Well, with maybe up to three resistance boosters on the biggest of the ships, two for the smaller ships that are with six utility slots, and one for the rest of them. Also, shields must be engineered with reinforced upgrade as the base upgrade. This way you can maximize the shield health in general. Yes, I know there are different builds out there, but they are niche and will fall in front of missiles. As for the heat sinks, well, okay, fine, they might be useful, but they rarely, if ever, are true, even when you're using shield cell banks, and that is true for PvP and PvE. Then, moving on. Warning! For PvP, unlike PvE, you need hull. Yes, as much as the term pure hull tanks, that is, ships with no shields focusing on hull only, is a joke, you still need hull that proverbial glue in the previous analogy. Remember those plasma accelerators or pulse lasers with phasing sequence? Well, those alone will make you wish you lubed yourself that day. As you could find people that focus so hard on their shields and keeping them up with shield cell banks and whatnot else, that you end up killing them without ever dropping their shields, purely thanks to phasing sequence. Seriously, I've done it! In fact, I made my third lines into the stupidest build ever. Five gimbaled pulse lasers, all with phasing sequence. And when I meet that rare, pure shield tank of a ship, it's the question of just a few minutes before their hull is at 50% and they wuss out like a little bitch! So the lesson is, have as much hull underneath as possible too. Here though, it's worth mentioning that balancing also module reinforcement uh, modules as well is a rather important thing. Otherwise, anyone can simply target one of your modules and destroy it immediately. Trust me when I say, it's pretty embarrassing to have your thrusters or power plant killed and you can't do anything with that 80% hull health still left. It's just sad. So, tossing in in the smallest slots a few module reinforcements, better yet the Guardian wants for the extra personal narrative is how you properly make a PvP ship. Or actually, anti-Xeno ship as well. Then we come to the thrusters and power distributor, or rather the ship itself. 
Here's the thing. Some of the ships simply are far better than the others, and for combat, it's painfully obvious in two specific cases. Ferdinand is the king, and Cutter is the queen of all ships, and the rest of them can go fuck off, basically. Well, yes, the skill of the pilot is more important than the ship build. Still, there is a reason why these two are the most common ganker ships. Both are very fast ships, so running away, while possible, well, is not very realistic in 99% of the cases. And maneuverability as well as damage output paired with incredible amounts of shields. I seriously shit you not, Cutter can get over 13,000 shield health points when maxed out. That's the reason they win, or at least don't lose, ever. Still, when building out any ship, maxing out thrusters and power distributors should always be priority. For thrusters, to max them out, of course A, grade them, dirty drive, upgrade them, and then drag, drive, effect, apply them. This recipe is for literally every single ship out there. And for the power distributors, well, the same thing, except for the upgrade, you should choose the charge enhanced and the experimental effect should just further recharge rate. All in all, that's how you make a combat ship. First, max out the speed and maneuverability, as well as power distributor, then max out the shields, and then make sure that the rest of the ship has enough hull, as well as power, and then finally pick the weapons that you feel comfortably with, and also that don't overheat too much, provide good damage paired with good effects. Mostly it's gonna be plasma accelerators, missiles, and rails, with some maybe beam lasers. All else is basically a gimmick that may or may not work. Now for some explorers out there. Well, the build for any ship is rather simple. Step 1. Strip everything. Sell the ships on board baby if you have to. Abort the fetus and install just one thing. Guardian FSD booster. Then maximize the jump range by putting in the best FSD, and that's pretty much it. Seriously, maxing out jump range is all you need. All else is optional. For Guardian FSD Booster, I actually made a video, so go check it out if you need some help. Still, if you have to eke out every single light year off your ship, all other parts can be upgraded to D-rated modules. These have the least amount of mass and will improve, well, however little, your jump range. And even after that, some of the modules have lightweight upgrades in engineering or stripped down experimental effects. And this is how you eke out the absolute maximum of it. Oh, and funny fact, there is an engineer in Colonia, and only in Colonia, that will give you that one last module upgrade. But don't stress about it too much. I did make a video on my maxed out anaconda if you need an info on of a type of a build that it is. But you're here to know what you will need for exploration, not just jumping. The ability for your ship to make the maximum jump range is just the base upon which you build. What you will need are two more things, a fuel scoop on the highest slot possible after Guardian FSD and a detailed surface scanner, the so-called probulator if you will. However, if you're going for a longer trip, I recommend picking up a smallest cargo rack you possibly can, a repair limpet controller and AFMU. These two modules in particular will fix everything except for a cockpit window, if it's broken, and the power plant. All else you'll be able to repair by synthesizing some limpets or AFMU ammo. Speaking of synthesis, to get that material crap to actually synthesize, you will need an SRV. So picking that too is a good idea. However, this thing, once destroyed, you won't be able to synthesize without returning to some kind of a star base. Now, in the deep dark depths, you may find some Lagrange clouds, which are really pretty, and you may want to take some samples with research limpets from those things that live in them. If you like that sort of a science-y lore bit thing, well, be warned that all it does is really just add an entry in your codex that you've basically done it, and that's about it. Oh, well, of course, you can also sell the sample later, but it really doesn't pay that much, so it's not really worth it. So, I personally would not bother. And finally, equipping a shield might be a good idea for some high-G planet landings, or maybe just simply to avoid mistakes. While I myself never use shields on my traveling slash exploration ships, I do so with a risk. It's just a safer option if you're ready to sacrifice a little bit of that jump range. And that's it. That's how you literally make an exploration ship on 
any of the platforms. Only difference is that the smaller ship might not have enough module space, but otherwise, it's all identical. Minimum weight ship with FSD booster, fuel scoop, probulator, and all else is up to you. And then finally the trading ships. Um, well, this is gonna be awkward, because it's literally the same as exploration ship, so strip it out completely. However, every single optional module slot should be replaced with cargo racks. Yes, that simple, that's it. I cannot make it any more simpler than that. The thing is, you will be playing in solo. Very rarely people actually trade in open. Those who do honestly don't seem to care about trading in of itself, rather about the interaction. So shields you don't need, speed you don't need, literally nothing in solo is threatening, so it requires also no weapons. And as for NPC interdictions, remember, they are designed so that every single ship out there, no matter how they are built, could escape it. Only a fucking Neanderthal will fail an NPC interdiction. And I'm not kidding about that fact, I've tested it. However, in the case you still want to try and trade in open. Well, the shields won't help you for too long, maybe a couple of seconds. Weapons are completely useless on the ship that you will be trading in. Nothing will help you except for one thing, and that's high waking. That is, jumping to another system. Yes, when you target a different system and jump to it, you're not burdened by the mass lock factor, which allows you to quickly jump out. And that's really the only way you're gonna survive. Surprisingly, trade ships, with exception of frameship drive, can be completely unengineered and perform just as well. Sure, a better power distributor and a better thruster will allow you to go faster, which is nice, but not always needed. And that's the guide to outfitting your ships for the major gameplay types. Of course, share your builds down below and check out the videos in the links, as well as some example builds that I put in there. But most of all, if you find this helpful and maybe you want to help me out a little bit, perhaps becoming a patron would be a best idea. Hell, even a buck a month is enough to sustain my potato-based diet. But all jokes aside, big thanks to all the YouTube members and patrons who make this happen. So now, onwards to engineering something stupid, like a fully daka 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 machine. Yeah!